The Yeti XL is finished and it's an impressive vehicle. The size is astounding. And I've never put together in a kit form something this big. Really impressed with it and before I take it out and destroy it, I want to just talk a little bit about the kit and how it went for me. Team Baxter. This was a really fun kit to put together. It had uh, huge parts. Everything was big. All the parts were pretty much the same. It's just that everything's so big. For instance, the shocks are, are bigger around than my fingers. It's just, just a mega kit. The wheels are huge. Tires huge. Everything. It, it's just fun to put something together this big. Um, not a lot of, if any, 8 scale kits out there. So that makes it unique all by itself. The parts seem to be pretty good quality. There's pretty good plastic shoes all throughout it. Um, I didn't notice any extremely soft plastic. There were a few areas where it had really strong plastic. I don't know if that translates to brittle, but there are a few areas where um, the plastic is really hard to screw into. Uh, for instance, the motor mount. The plastic motor mount that's included with the kit is very hard to screw into. Uh, that may be a good thing, that may translate to brittle, I'm not sure at this point, but good blend of plastics all together, I feel. The kit went together uh, maybe better than the 110 scale version. Uh, everything went together seamlessly. I really haven't seen uh, a kit go together as nice from Axial uh, as this one did. Um, not to say that any of the other Axial kits are lacking, it's just that everything seemed to fit extremely well. Uh, there were a few little problems I had with it, like for instance in the drive shafts. The Wild Boar XL drive shafts are too long for my drivers. This isn't a problem I've ever had before. Let's see the tip of this driver. It wasn't long enough to reach into the end of the drive shaft to screw the little drive shaft together. So. Um, that was a little bit of an issue for me, not a big deal, I managed to work it out, but just just the size of this thing prohibited me from working on it correctly. The manual was pretty good, um, there were a few instances where there were uh, screws mislabeled, parts mislabeled, not really hard to find, but um, you kind of had to keep your eye on it, I don't know if, I mean, it, a lot of instances where it's common sense to put the right part in, but they were labeled wrong. I don't know if a beginner uh, would catch that. Uh, most of the old pros just roll right through it. I did as well. It's just that I happened to notice it and it's just something that I, I wanted to point out. It starts off small. You know, you start off with the diff and it's a little tiny thing and then you add parts and parts and it gets really big really quick. And I tell you, when you put the wheels on, it just makes it huge. Um, filled up my workspace pretty quickly. So as far as the build goes, I kept it pretty standard. I didn't change too many things. I used different oils and fluids, and that's about it. Um, I didn't deviate from the manual too much. I used 500,000 weight oil in the front diff, and I used 1 million weight oil in the rear diff, quite a big difference from the 20,000 that they ask for you to use. Um, I've read and I felt like that wasn't enough. I, even in some of my 10 scale bashers, I've put a heavier weight oil than 20,000 in there. So I stiffened the diff oil up. This may or may not be a good thing, but I think it'll be just fine. I'm pretty sure it'll be just fine, actually. A little weird thing about the drive shafts is they get held in by three screws on the inside. There are a couple of bearings that get seated inside of a chamber and then it's held in by three screws. Um, I'm sure the screws are there just to hold it in place and I'm sure plenty of people have uh, tested this. It just seems really odd to me that just those th edges of those three screws hold that drive shaft in. Um, maybe that's all it needs but never seen that before. Axial was so kind to include a hex dub upgrade I know that the RTR Yeti XLs came with the less than favorable uh, hex hub setup. The standard hex hubs with pretty much a washer attached to the to the nut. Pretty crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Fortunately, they've changed it and put this 17 millimeter hex hub on here. Um, looks good. Looks like it's holding pretty good. Of course, I haven't driven it yet, so. 
get it out and see how it does. Um, but I'm thankful that they gave that 17 millimeter hex hub. They also provided a nice uh, substantial tool to use uh, with these hex hubs. Um, nice hefty metal uh, cross wrench. So the hex nuts have a little serrated edge to them so that they can grip the wheel properly. Um, the serration is not so heavy. Um, just looks like they're scarred a little bit. Everything seems solid as I said before. Um, the plastic parts are very beefy. The front has plastic knuckles and carriers. And pull the top off. Um, Axial did a good job with this top. It kind of locks into place. The body comes up and it kind of notches into place. It's in there pretty good. So that, that's pretty helpful. I used a pretty basic electronic setup. I've got a 2200 kV castle motor in there. I used the black can just for looks. I like the way that looked. I happen to have one so that's what's in there. Uh, Mamba Monster 2 because I've heard mixed reviews about the Sidewinder 8 that's in the RTR. Uh, well the rebranded Sidewinder 8 that's in the RTR. A lot of guys running 6S say it's underpowered. I won't be running 6S probably but Let's just get the Mamba Monster 2 in there for uh, safety's sake. I don't want to have to deal with any sort of upgrading in the future with this. So that's what's in there. The receiver is locked up under this ESC. The ESC is double stick taped onto a plate. Uh, that plate holds the screws in that will allow you to, res to access the receiver. Um, so hopefully nothing ever happens to the receiver because then you'll have to peel the ESC off of the plate with the extremely strong double stick tape that I've got on there then get under that and take the screws out and then hopefully be able to get that all out, all back together in the field repairs aren't going to be a nice thing with this so um, let's hope I built it right I used a stronger servo for the big wheels I used the uh, stronger high tech the Mamba Monster has a built-in BEC to accommodate the uh, high voltage of this servo and I've got that turned up just a little bit to uh, help the servo out. That 2200 kV is sitting on a really nice gearbox and it seems like it's set up most of the way for a two-speed right now. Right underneath these wires there's a slot for uh, another servo and the servo mount is actually included in the plastic parts for the Yeti XL. So the two-speed should be pretty easy to, to drop right in here and I assume it works in here somewhere. Inside this gearbox uh, where the spur is, the kit provides two aluminum slipper plates that are used instead of the regular paper slipper plates that uh, you normally use with the slipper. Um, they actually did include the paper plates but they asked you to use the metal ones instead. I'm not sure if there was an issue at some point but metal ones are in there, metal slippers two of them, one on each side of the spur the drive shafts are pretty beefy um, and I really like the construction, they're really well constructed save the the problem of getting my driver in there completely and those drive shafts run down to that monster AR60 axle kind of a replica or a rebuild of that smaller AR60 axle that's on the Yeti the smaller Yeti and the Wraith's Axial's 110 product line. The kit has pretty nice battery doors. Um, they are held on by two two pins and they just swivel down. Um, not sure how well they'll hold up. They are different plastic than the rest of everything and there are two pins in there that this tray swivels up on. Um, those pins are plastic and soft plastic at that so we'll see how they they last. Uh, and then it closes and you slide these two uh, body pins on there. I put poles on the body pins. These are my own poles uh, just because probably a lot easier to get it the pins on and off with those. The bottom links on this kit have the aluminum plates that its little brother does. The axial included the bottom lower link plates. You can see them just peeking out right there. Um, 
the top does not have aluminum plates but it does have big plastic braces uh, I'm sure Axial provides uh, upper link brace kit that you can buy Axial's provided these huge shock bodies here you can see them as big as my hand and they're bigger than my finger um, truly big bore shocks that I've used a little more than a bottle of oil filling those things up they've got really nice smooth action I use different weight oil than Axial suggests a little heavier in the front and back actually a lot heavier in the back um, so my shocks are a little bit stiffer than Axial and Tens. Axial wanted you to put Ten in there um, that's one of the few points where I went against the manual uh, just because I wanted to set mine up the way I wanted to and they come with dual stage springs and a nice fat retainer clip to hold down the bottom just occurred to me that I forgot to zip tie that retainer clip on there uh, I seem to have a problem with losing retainer clips uh, spring retainer clips so I zip tie them around from the bottom of the spring around the bottom of the retainer clip and that seems to hold them on well for me got this big tube frame body it went together with coarse thread screws there's really not a whole lot of pieces to this tube frame it, uh, it's got two large side panels and then the connector pieces in the middle and then I hung the Lexan panels on that tube frame it's on two side panels of course a roof panel and the hood panel I did a little bit more with the stickers than normal but still not too much. I wanted to keep it understated as I always do. Smoke paint job to match its little brother. Minimal detail on the inside. Uh, did a little liquid mask and three colors. Uh, gun metal on the seats and console. Black for the bodies and uh, smoke for the floor panels. A little bit of paint on the skull mask that I used on the smaller Yeti as well kind of match things up and that's about it for the interior tires got glued on I actually had a hard time gluing these on it's been a while since I glued the tire but I had a little problem getting it seated not gluing them on the tires just wouldn't seat in this bead uh, maybe if I trimmed the foam they would have seated a little better if I trimmed the foam uh, on a 45 right there at the bead not sure I got them on um, I had to hold them. I used an extreme amount of rubber bands to keep them on, and um, they're on there. And right there in the center, you can see that little 17 millimeter hex nut that I talked about earlier. Uh, five tires, all glued. I uh, chose to go with glue to avoid the wheels coming out of a beadlock. Fifth tire gets strapped into the back with the little tire carrier assembly and this actually works pretty well um, versus a lot of the 10 scale ones that don't seem to work as well this one actually twists and untwists and actually releases the tire and all I'm not sure why they put that back there but it's there they included it fit tire so I had lots of fun with the kit it went together beautifully as I been keep saying I don't have any complaints with this it's odd that I don't have at least one or two things that I really just didn't like it, it went together magnificently so now I'm gonna go drive it